Igor Larionov is best known in North America for his performance last season. He led the San Jose Sharks to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. In Voskresensk, where he grew up, he's known as one of the world's greatest players. He left for Moscow as a young man to join the Red Army in national teams. Alongside Vladimir Krutov and Sergei Makarov, he played on one of the best lines in hockey history. In 1989, he joined the Vancouver Canucks, leaving home for good. It's been 15 years since I've been gone. So this is it. This is the place you called home? Yeah. And you were where? Sixth floor? You Sixth floor. Humble, yes, but home. And only a stroll from his school and across the street from his first ice rink, where he really lived. In 15 years, not much has changed. Same smell. <laughs> just, the, just the smell. On the outdoor rink where Igor played as a boy, the children still play pickup games early in the season. I've been playing the same, same way. I guess they, they can't wait to get uh, natural ice, you know. Or to find a real net, just like when Igor was young. But we're not in America, in the Soviet Union, it was about 20 years ago, so we didn't have anything. We didn't have uh, sports stores to sell in uh, hockey nets for the kids to play street hockey. So you have to create your own net. Equipment is still scarce. Skates are passed on from one boy to the next until they can no longer be laced. Face masks and uniforms are reused until they fall apart. Small city clubs, like Voskresensk, need more of everything. One answer was supposed to be NHL transfer fees for players like Larianov. And it's been about 1.2 million dollars supposed to come from Vancouver for these kids. For the Where six. did it go? Nobody knows. Nobody gave me an answer. These children need the answer. And today, more than ever, the clubs desperately need money. Igor's father used to work at this Defense Department chemical plant. It sponsored hockey in this town. The end of the Cold War has changed that. Next year, they planning to close this, shut down this uh, plant, and 10,000 people will be out of job. In small Russian towns, local support must keep the team alive. A difficult task when you consider the average salary in these areas is about $50 a month. It's a country which knows no prosperity, except for the hockey player. Like a precious commodity, they are still produced in small towns like Igor's. They dress in closet-sized locker rooms and play on dimly lit rinks, their pads and gloves older than their coaches. Off-ice training sets the Russians apart. A young goalie will practice for hours with nothing more than tennis balls to perfect his skill. Hockey is a window of opportunity for these people, a way to escape a dreary life. You look around these towns and you feel like you've gone back in time. While the rest of the world moved forward, Russia has moved in circles. Sometimes, Mark, it's really hard to explain to you guys, you know. You guys right now, you, you witnesses what's going on in reality because you, you can see it with your own eyes. I would like to see this, these people, I mean, Russian people, these kids, who have the same kind of life what I have right now. That life is not possible here today. And while the NHL offers promise for these young children, for most, it will never be more than just a dream. Конечно, кино делать, кино делать.